Well, I think the conference um, for me placed great importance and, and some important thoughts about the extent to which a constitution is in some sense pre designed to preserve the status quo and the extent to which the constitution ultimately is designed to shift the status quo. And um, it's for minorities often there's a great tension here because the status quo is not a very comfortable one and there's a need to kind of move forward and push uh, and advance and yet often the majority uh, and um, the majoritarian processes are not yet there. So the question to some extent is how in a sense the uh, constitution drafters can in a sense foreshadow future developments without going too far beyond uh, where current uh, popular opinion and understandings are. From this conference when I talked about minorities it had me it has me thinking another way because um, my country Liberia is is a conglomeration of minorities. There's no real majority tribe. So you continue to to be broad in principles and terms. So where how do you protect the, the culture and tradition of each of those tribes? How do you do it? It, it gave me a whole different angle to, to think about and think deep in terms of my work. Maybe we have reached that bridge where um, various constitution builders in the world can come up with a tool, uh, a standardization, an attempt to standardize uh, the processes of constitution making that can be borrowed uh, from various contexts. Not necessarily a template for constitution making, but a very good guide informed by various contexts as possible. What the constitution is supposed to do in many cases is to uh, be part of a change process. And I think that is then always the question, how do we create the process, also the co process of constitution making, that it is in line with the change process. Nepal, because of its unique characteristic, um, we, we need to have our own indigenous way of doing it, our own homegrown solution to it. So, of course, these um, lessons will be extremely useful. But then how to incorporate it in our own context. We could see you know, like the quota system, for example, a specific quota if we have. So that, that can be a lesson learned for us, you know, like how can we really target those really, really minority groups and how to have a quota system for them that they are included in the constitution building process. Uh, especially how representatives from different marginalized communities can use the process uh, in different ways. Uh, so for example, we have had uh, a, a, a spokesperson uh, from uh, Tunisian women who described how they needed time in order for uh, women to come together to form common positions, uh, to educate themselves in order to use the constitution uh, building process in, in the most effective wo manner. And as she described also, that whenever they uh, reached any kind of impediments or barriers, they could then turn to other ways, go out onto the streets, as she described, as an alternative means of expression. Another uh, very powerful example was uh, our um, uh, colleague, uh, an LGBT activist from Nepal, where the process there was crucial for him to build one-on-one -on -one relationships uh, with the other members of the constituent assembly. So this clearly was a key message from the first day.